Sign up today. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the April 30th, the uh, Thirsty Thursday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right, when you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. Now today, you and I, we're gonna go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're gonna go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but much, much more important than that, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there too. You can always send me an email. Let those fingers do the walking. Send me an email to steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And in our Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we got all the indices in the red, with the exception of the spot volatility index. The Dow is down 362 points, about one and a half percent. S and P up one and a quarter percent, 37 points. Nasdaq down only three tenths. Nasdaq 100, four tenths of a percent. That's 32 points. The Russell is the big percentage loser. It's off three and a quarter points, uh, percent, 44 points. The semis are down 3% or 54 points out there. Uh, you've got the spot volatility trade down to 34.76, up 11%. Watch that one day rate of change. Although lately, because of these wide swings out here, I'm not so sure I rely completely on my one day rate of change, 10% tool, tool for the spot volatility index. But it's, it's still in play, but uh, maybe a bit shaky these days. You've got gold down 17 bucks and silver's off 29 cents that's one and nearly one nearly two percent in silver it's one 1.9 percent lights we crude is up 16 percent or two bucks and change she's trading at 1747 gold's up a couple of pennies and treasury bonds 30 years up 19 ticks as we speak amazon is leading the charge dollar wise the upside up 44 bucks service now is up 26 uh, you've got ABIO Med is up 24 that's 14 percent to the downside booking holdings off 41 or two and Three quarters percent. Credit Acceptance Corp. We had looked at that yesterday. Don't remember what our take was on it off the top of my head, but it is down uh, 33 buckaroonies as we speak. AutoZone is off 27. Hey, let's go to our first caller. Our first caller is um, going to be Jim in Palm Harbor. Jim, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? I'm good, Steve. How are you? Very good. Thanks so much for asking. And uh, Walmart is the, uh, I believe, is what you're calling about. If so, uh, tell us uh, what you're looking at and how we can help you. I'm looking uh, at a medium to uh, short-term trade, uh, maybe like a swing trade. It, it uh, seems to be kind of stabilizing here at this level, and I'm just wondering if you thought uh, uh, it'd be a good place that this pullback i've been waiting for some kind of pullback in it and i'm just wondering if it's this is good enough <laughs> so sure sure okay so so great question so jim is looking to get into a uh, long position inside of walmart 
And we can see here that over the last couple of days that this is pulling back. We can see pretty wide ranging bar on a weekly chart. That's the center panel of our screen out here. And uh, so one of the first tools that Jim and I are going to look for, we're going to hunt and peck for where support is out here. And uh, what we can see here, Jim, is that yesterday was not really a good scene for Amazon. And what I mean by that, and this is based upon the daily time frame chart, is that was a bullish structured profile. Bullish in structure because there were more buyers lined up. There's only buyers basically at the bottom of the profile. That was 127.09. There's both buyers and sellers at the center of the box. Well, you can see how close that is at 128.66 to the bottom. And then you've got at the top, which is where sellers are at, or resistance, 133.38. So, Jim, I like to say there's nothing more bearish than a failed bullish pattern. Not so that this is a pattern, but failed bullish pattern from the standpoint of strong support. And price gap down through it. And there was volume yesterday. Pretty good volume. So then that just says, okay, where do my eyes go for the next level of support? Well, it would take a look at the bearish structure weekly profile. That top of that box is 120.26. We're trading at 121.50 or so. Um, if Walmart's going to find a bottom, uh, even though 120.26 is the top of the weekly profile, the better uh, the better potential buy would be at 117.65. That's the center of that bearish structured profile. And if price closes into 120.26, one of two outcomes. The bullish outcome is that price gets back to that area where that center was. That's a bear structure at 117.65. I see this pattern many times, and that's where price would find support. Whereas, if price closes below 117.65, boy, Jim, now you're looking at about the 104.61 area. We're not there yet, but at least you have these numbers to uh, pay attention to on the uh, on any kind of a uh, pullback. Now, we're trading at straight at 121.50 right now. Let me, what the heck is going on with this chart? This is definitely not right. Let me see here if I can reload all the historical data. So any questions based upon what I've given you thus far? Uh, no, it sounds pretty good. I had a symmetry uh, retracement to 112.15 as, as a potential buy point. Uh, which is fairly close, not real close, but <laughs> you had 117. But uh, and I had uh, 124 is the higher end of it. Where, uh, but that's when I first started looking to see if it was going to pull back. Uh, okay. And its high, of okay. course, was 133. Well, let, let's go with your 112 type area. And so on a daily chart. We can see here that um, the breakout level, so today's going to be bar number seven, uh, Jim, of a uh, TD nine count. And so if this is going to find a bottom with that pattern, that would say that the low would occur either Friday, Monday, or Tuesday out there. And I'm not at this stage, we can't call it even a TD9 count just today. And this is going to be bar number seven. But the 112 area that you were talking about, I have here is the actual most recent breakout in the daily time frame being 110.94. So it gets us to the 111 to get close to your 112 ish type area. And so at this stage of the game, I'd say, yeah, that would be an area where you would. You know, try to focus on and, and, and pay attention. The 117.65, and if you can get some type of bottom signal on the daily time frame, that, that may be a place. But because price isn't down there, we don't know what the daily charts are going to look like. It's too hard to say at this stage of the game. But yeah, lower, lower price, I think. And today is not that day that I'm seeing as a buy for Walmart. Right. I appreciate it. I, I, yeah, I had a TD7 countdown on the daily as well. So oh, I'm glad I know I, I had that right. <laughs> you're, doing, okay. you're, doing, you're doing great. You're doing great. Hey, Jim, we're about okay. to go to a commercial. So uh, thanks so much for calling and spending some time with us and have a terrific Thursday. You too. Bye. You bet. We'll be right back, folks. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading 
trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. TFNN is launching an open house for our Tiger's Den. For a limited time, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Tiger's Den. Just enter promo code OPEN at checkout and pay nothing for 30 days while you try out your Tiger's Den membership as part of our open house. With market volatility at an all-time high and people all over the world working from home if possible, TFNN is hosting an open house in our Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is an interactive chat room that runs all day where other tigers and tigresses discuss trading ideas with the hosts and members along with charts and current market news as well as live access to the charts the hosts use during their programs join us for the tiger's den open house begin your den membership today by just entering open at checkout and pay nothing while you try things out for 30 days for all the details and to start your den membership today visit the front page of tfnn.com don't miss out on the tfnn tiger's den open house taking place now sign up today Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Dow's off 311. S&P is down uh, 31 points out here. Boy, I'm starting to have some uh, some data issues with the system. So this will be pretty interesting here uh, for the next uh, 40 minutes uh, or so. Uh, let's go to a, a couple of questions that have come in. Let's see if I can uh, get through this. One was coming in from uh, Dennis about a Bitcoin trust, GBTC. So I've got at least got this chart here where we can take a look at the uh, data. And uh, although I can't draw, I'll use the A to B equals CD tool out here, Dennis, on this uh, version of the uh, software. There is an A to B equals CD to the upside that is almost complete. Uh, maybe it's like around the 10, 50-ish type area. So that is uh, the potential there inside a Bitcoin trust is that you could see a Gartley sell pattern form. Now, what you would be looking for over the next several days here would be some type of bearish reversal candle to confirm that pattern. We don't have that. Today also is, looks like it's going to be bar number eight of a TD9 count. So with regard to uh, Bitcoin, although I can't show the A equals CD pattern out here, you've got that pattern uh, that uh, could be a top. You've got a TD9 count that is establishing itself. That says could be the high of today, tomorrow, Friday, or on Monday. You see that uh, topping signal. And then price would likely pull back into the 8-ish type area out there and, and that's what i see when i take a look at bitcoin on the daily time frame if i go to the monthly time frame 1048 is going to be your significant resistance level that's stevie's green line for that time frame out there so i wouldn't anticipate that uh, bitcoin trust is going to get much beyond that on the weekly time frame i don't really have anything out here uh what i will share with you george uh, dennis i'm sorry uh i don't know if if this is just a trade or 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 what uh, for you or or an investment and what I, I, I please everybody 
everybody listen to what I'm about to say. This may not impact you, but it may impact somebody that you do know. And that's why I want you to really take a role here. To the extent that you know anyone that uses digital currencies, has a investment, basically not, not use them so much, but has an investment, is trying to take an investment in digital currencies, please tell them to liquidate those accounts. Tell them to get out of that marketplace. I'm not trying to time the top or the bottom or anything out here. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to, oh my goodness, this says I lost my connection here. And I hope that's just for the data feed. Uh, maybe someone in the den could give me a thumbs up if you can actually hear me. Um, uh, oh man, I'm still there, okay, great. So uh, what I want you to do is I want you to do, the, you can do this research. And the research is, I want you to go see what the IMF and the ECB are doing over in Europe. And you'll do the research, and what you will find is that they're preparing to uh, get rid of the paper currency, the euro, and uh, move to a, uh, a, a digital currency. Now, if you think, if you think, if you honestly believe that, and then you can go back and take a look at the CARES bill that we had here and take a look at what the uh, what uh, what the Democrats out there. I'm not using saying Democrats as I'm just just as a, you know what they tried to push into the first version of that bill was a version of that same digital currency here in the U.S. You, you've, you've probably been to places if you've gone out and people are saying, um, you know, they don't take cash or something like that. You know, the, the idea that this uh, virus is being spread on cash. Folks, if, if there's not a wake up call to what's really going on here, give me an, a break. And you can fill in the adjective there before a break out there. But here's the deal. Here's the important thing. Uh, and all it is is really just governments wanting to know every penny, nickel, shekel, anything that you've got out there. And they want to be able to track it, tax it, see what you're spending money on. You want to talk about giving up rights altogether out here. But this is really the important thing. I don't know when it's going to happen. I just know that it is going to happen. And if you really believe that uh, central banks are going to allow other digital currencies to live out there, Okay, if that's what you really believe, if you believe in fairy tales, that would be one of them. In any event, let's uh, so so please, uh, 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 Dennis, uh, uh, trading and so forth. Okay, I get it, but be really careful because that is the hot potato. Now let's go to uh, Orlando and speak with uh, John. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Hi, Steve. How are you? Good afternoon. I, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Thank you. Uh, now, last time we spoke, uh, you had taken a, a short in the S&P 500. I know you're calling about the S&P 500. Um, tell me what you're doing, how I can help you. Okay. Uh, I'm looking at the daily. I'm looking at two different candles. Uh, one candle is on uh, February 28th, $5.1 billion, and the high was 2960 is that going to be a resistance? You're going back to February 28th out here. Um, so the real resistance, then, sure. Uh, yeah, the real resistance five, level. 5.1 billion in volume that's people getting out. Sure, so I, 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 I understand that. Yeah, so, so, so you're looking at that from a volume standpoint. What I'd like to share with you is the real resistance level inside of the S&P 500 for its daily time frame. And for me, John, that real resistance level is the high from March the 6th. I don't just pick out that date for any reason. I pick out that date and, and that high because that represents the last time that price broke down uh, using the uh, TD9 count pattern out there. And it's a, it's a superb tool for being able to objectively identify support or resistance. In this case here, it's resistance. And you can see it on my chart. Now, what the S&P 500 has been doing, it's made one to one A to B equals CD and got just slightly above that. As we speak right now, John, uh, we've got a bear yeah. sash candle. And, and so today's candle, uh, the bear structure of the candle, if this is what it looks like at four o'clock, this would be the confirmation of a Gartley cell pattern out here um, in the A to B equals CD lore, the way that I use it and the way that I use it says we have to wait for buyers and sellers to communicate to us what their intention is. And that's why we take a look at Japanese candlesticks at the completion of a pattern. Now, what we can also see on the S&P 500 
is that my red line has turned green. It did that yesterday. And what that means, John, is that means that the price oscillator has reached the zero threshold level. Now, the price oscillator is nothing more than taking a look at the difference between the 19 and the 39 day exponential moving average. And when that gets to zero, when that threshold gets to zero, the phenomena that occurs is that we see price over the coming sessions. I don't know how many, John, but over the coming sessions, we see my line, which has now turned green and price catch up to each other. If price were to, however that test, it could be price moving sideways, the line going up, price moving down, whatever that test is. If there's a test and rejection, that would be the bullish case because my oscillator on change line is green. And green is letting us know that the price oscillator is now at zero or just slightly above zero. And if price tests that and then bounces off of that, we would then have a rising price oscillator above zero. And that would be bullish. Now, what that would also mean to me is that would be bullish and that price would try to run up into resistance, 29.85. So hang on through this break because I want to be able to make sure I have answered your questions here. But right now, the S&P okay. is trading between support which is 2800 and really resistance, which is 2985. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNL. We'll be right back to finish up the questions for John in Orlando. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, Dow's down 345. 
and he's off uh, 35 points. And uh, John, before I come back to you, John, because uh, here I can show you the tool in live action out here and, and why these uh, understanding the TD9 count support and resistance levels are really, really critical. And that's each of the 30 minute time frames right now have pulled back to their breakout level. So we're gonna learn a lot probably over the course of the next couple of hours out here, whether this move to the downside is anything more than just a pullback to a short term support level. And so if we take a look at the NQ where it had most recently broken out was 89.2275, no swing point, no nothing out there, but it was the beginning of those nine successive, nine successive close is actually it wasn't the beginning it was the low of that pattern uh, where we saw nine consecutive closes where each close was above the close four bars earlier on the 30 minute time frame and provide us with a nice level of support so the area to watch there is going to be on a short term basis is 89.22 out there for the uh, NQ I'll give you a feel on the ES because once you break one level and on the ES that level is 288.8175 and the price got down to maybe within a tick or two and, and has bounced off of that level but if we do see two closes below 288.8175 John then the next area is going to be 2860 where price will try to find support so back to the S&P 500 um, what what other questions uh, do you have or did that answer oh. your question about See. Yeah, yeah, you entered the top side. Now I have a question on the on the bottom here on March twenty third. The low and there was high volume low. Does that have to be tested on the S and P? It's twenty twenty two ninety six. Yeah. Or no, I'm sorry, twenty one and ninety two. Well, here's how here's here's how you'll be able to answer that question. So I'll, I'll let the chart patterns answer that for you. Just like you and I took a look at where the TD nine count breakdown level was, twenty nine eighty five ninety three, the breakout level because it was a TD nine count to the upside that formed is twenty five seventy four fifty seven. So let's say that today is the uh, confirmation of a Gartley sell pattern. We know that the oscillator and change line change from red to green. So we know that price and that line should catch up to each other. If price closes below that line, that tells us that price wants to continue to move lower. And inside the S&P 500, that level of support would be 2574.57. If the S&P 500 closes below that level, John, then that's telling you that price wants to go back and target those March lows. So as opposed to just give you a definitive answer, let the uh, here, we, be, you know, what we have is we have very objective levels to watch to then allow the market, the chart, to communicate to us what its intention is. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. So it's uh, it's kind of a step by step you got to take. It's really the only thing that we can do is, is step by step and try to stay with inside your time frame because this is nothing more every market. So it doesn't matter even though you and I are looking at a chart for the S&P 500. This could be a currency pair. This could be corn. This could be wheat. This could be anything. We're just simply going to use the same tools for that time frame and it's all about clearly identifying levels of support or resistance that we have confidence in, that have absolute meaning out there, and that are standard. That way, every single trader that's listening to this show here can use these exact same tools, and then it'll assist you for the time frame that you're trading with what the market is trying to communicate to us. A blank chart, it becomes very, very difficult. But we start decorating it with these tools, um, and this pattern out here is so outstanding at being able to help us identify support or resistance. And so then it just makes it really one step at a time, one step at a time out here. Just because it's a Gartley sell pattern that could be forming today, what the sellers only have the right to do is go down and try and test support. It's as they try to test those levels of support that tell us whether or not that was some kind of a major top or, or not out there. Okay? Okay. Thank you, Steve.
Hey, you bet, you bet. Thanks for calling. That was John in Orlando. Let me take a quick peek here, folks, see if I've got any other questions. Yeah, there's one that's come in, a couple that have come in. The first one coming in from Mimi, and Mimi wants to take a look at uh, ticker symbol COP. I think that's ConocoPhillips, but let's go see what that is. Yeah, it's ConocoPhillips, and uh, looks like an A to B equals CD pattern may be underway here. Let's go ahead and uh, mark this in here for Mimi. The A point is the low from March the uh, 17th. The B point is going to be this high that... Uh, failed to clear the top of its daily profile. That was on April the 9th. And then you have a retracement for about three or four days out here to create that C point, the low of April 16th. Well, come on, grab it. Come on, Mimi's waiting. There we go. So Mimi, right now, it looks like there's a A to B equals CD that gives you a one-to-one -one price projection of 17.14. Now, the B point had 37, was at 3798. That's uh, April 9th. Yeah, April 9th. 14 million shares. Yesterday, when price gapped up and moved higher, it was slightly lighter volume, 13 million shares. So it's not like we've got a confirmed A to B equals CD, and that sometimes should make us say, hmm, something to think about. Plus, you're inside the gap out there. So, Mimi, um, and your, your, your question was comment on COP going long. If you're looking to enter the trade, now is not the time. And the reason why now is not the time, even if the A to B equals CD pattern plays out um, here on the daily time frame, you're going to see that today is going to be the bar following bar number nine. And oftentimes, and I'm not saying this is going to, but if this is going to identify the top, today's high is it. Now, if we take a look at the TD9 count and we look at the bottom that formed here in ConocoPhillips, the bottom was on the uh, day of March 18th. That was the bar following bar nine of that TD nine count pattern that identified the low. Now, on the very next trading session out there, you had the rose momentum indicator bottom uh, that formed with regard to with, with when that bull sash candle formed. So if, if you're long, you can certainly stay long. And I'm not I'm not telling you to exit. I'm 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 sharing with you that this could be forming a top out here and you don't have confirmed volume for the a to b equals cd to the upside and so you'd want to make sure that you've got some kind of trailing stop now the average daily movement on conoco phillips over the last 10 trading sessions has been two dollars and 78 cents so uh and and the resistance by the way out here is 48.64 um, even though I gave you the A to B equals CD, that is where price had broken down. So what you need to do, and your, your stop should likely be, well, you, you do whatever you want with your stop. But ordinarily, if you're trying to stay in the stock for the longer term, your stop would be $2.78 times 1.272 or 1.618, whatever that value is, less today's close. That's what you would look at for a, a stop out there. Now, once you get that math, then you can figure out that's your risk. Your reward would be price gets up to 4864, which you know is a clear resistance level. And then you can make the determination whether it is worth it to continue to stay inside the trade or maybe tighten up your stop a little differently out there. So I hope that that helps you out with regard to ConocoPhillips out here. It looks pretty good, but you've got to be a bit concerned about the uh, daily session out there. And Mimi, if, the high, if, the, if today's high, there's a close above today's high tomorrow, then that pattern will have failed and likely we're going to take a look at that a to b equals cd completion in that 47 ish area or wherever that resistance level was that i gave you which i believe is 4864. steve rhodes with tfnn we'll be right back If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. 
That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. So uh, my apology here, my data flow issue. Uh, we've got to get everybody back to work. I'm at the end of the trunk, unfortunately, very close to the end of the trunk on my uh, uh, high-speed line out here. And everybody on this thing is just uh, creating some problems. So uh, hopefully this comes back up, but I, I think you can hear me. You can hear me, so so we're good there. But actually, it's time when everything in life happens for us, right? So let's take a look at this next question. This is what I mean by it. This is coming in from Joe. Joe says, "Oh, Steve, love your show. If you were 30 years old and had X to invest in the market, what would you do to start? And, and uh, Joe says he's a beginning investor out there. So I appreciate the question, Joe, and I'm going to give you my, my best stuff out here. But that is, um, uh, so his question is, goes on to say, what would you what would you do to start? Would you buy some long-term bulls while some stocks are on sale? I keep waiting for this big dip to buy, but those lows we saw in March may never come again. When should I hop on a stock like Amazon right now before the earnings? Thanks for your help. So we're going to we're gonna definitely uh, keep you away from buying Amazon at the top. Not that it can't go higher out there, but I want to come back to to first your 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 question. Your, what I want to do is I just want to share with you history, because the the it's so important to learn from history, in my opinion, uh, that is. And and so let's take a look at what the um, so so if we can do that, I'll just simply start here. I'll put this together during the during the break when I saw this question. So we'll see how good I am putting together this quick little presentation. So what can we learn from history? So, Joe, this is just for you. Everybody else, don't listen. Just close your ears, okay? No, I'm just kidding. So what is it that we can learn from history out here? Well, one of the things that we can learn are the Gartley, Gartley buy and sell patterns. This was created by H.M. Gartley back in 1935, uh, so after, during the Great Depression out there. He sold this book for 1500 bucks. sold 1,000 copies of it. Think about that. Now, the cost of a new Ford back then, a new Ford was uh, 500 bucks. So worth basically three cars out there. So it's really valuable. 
And on page 222 of his book, that's where we come up with the term, the Gartley 222. And it's this panel over here on the right. I just, uh, even though, Joe, this may look um, uh, like, uh, it may look like, you don't even know what the heck I'm talking about. That's okay. Just follow me historically here. But it was this pattern here back in 1935 uh, where we have the first A to B equals CD pattern. I want you to look at uh, number B uh, out here, diagram B, and you'll see that here's a long bull run, which is what we've been through, a big pullback out there, which is what we also were through. Consider this pullback here to be the March low. Consider yourself that what we're living in right now is very similar, not exactly the same, but similar to the Great Depression. And we're going to be depressed for years, folks out here. We are going to be depressed about what, what we just allowed our government and our medical people to actually do. But let's just stay here with this. Uh, don't get me off track there, because if you do, man, you'll, you'll get a slew of, of stuff. But here, what H.M. Gartley did was he created that A to B equals CD pattern and said, sell the first Gartley in a bear market. Okay, here's uh, the page out of his book where he's taken a look at his weekly chart here. Uh, but what I've done is I've, I've got the historical data. You can see the A to B equals CD pattern, but here we can take a look at it specifically. So here's that same weekly chart. Going back to 1929, nice hammer candle out there also that formed when it on a weekly basis that formed at the uh, at the initial bottom for 1929. Then we saw for like about 21 bars out here. In this case, we charts of 21 weeks before we saw the Gartley sell. Here's the Gartley sell, the bearish engulfing candle. Now, if we take a look at what transpired from that Gartley sell, and this is what I really want you to focus on, Joe, is there are many people probably back in 1929 that feel the same way. Say, man, look at that low. That may we may never see that low again out there. And I'm not going to say here and guarantee you that this pattern is going to repeat. I don't have to because that would be subjective. I'm not going to give you subjective information. I'm not going to do that. I want you to learn from history, and I don't want to rewrite the history books. But what I am doing is I'm sharing with you the history book. And likely the folks back there in 1929 uh, or towards 1930 were thinking, you know, man, I may never see that low again. But thankfully... Uh, because of H.M. Gartley, who identified this pattern, we know what to pay attention to. When John and Orlando and I were talking, we were talking about the Gartley sell pattern out there for the daily time frame. Now, here we can see that the market didn't bottom until 1932. So the question is, well, what was the market doing in 1932 that formed that bottom, Joe? Glad you asked that question. Now what we can see here is if we just simply go take a look. So yesterday we had the first quarter GDP, which was minus 4.2% out there. Uh, we're back down to the 2009 level of GDP. So at the same time that the stock market was bottoming in 1932, we also saw GDP bottom. So my question for you and everybody else out there is, do you think that GDP is bottomed? Do you think it's bottomed? If we go take a look at it, it's just not just 1932. If you take a look at the 2009 bottom, now I don't have the GDP level on this chart, but if I did show you it, uh, the GDP percentage is down towards, it's down at the minus 4%. You can see where it was back in 2009. But you can see the GDP low along with the 2009 bottom. And then you can see 1970s low and 1974s low and 1982s low. And you can see it in 2002. You can see it in 1991. You kind of get the gist here. Objectively, chart patterns out here are saying, well, if we haven't gotten a gross domestic product bottom, here in the U.S., why should we believe that March was the low? Secondly, tomorrow, I believe we get unemployment numbers, right? We get the weekly unemployment, the weekly uh, unemployment numbers out here. And here, if we just simply go back into the 1970s out here, and we just track the direction of the stock market, that's the upper chart, and we track unemployment out here, you'll see the direct correlation. If unemployment is rising, the stock market is moving down. If unemployment is a uh if unemployment, if employment is moving up, the stock market is moving up. And you can just see the pattern that is out here. And, uh, and, and, and there are many people out here that had said, I, and I heard this early on, and this is why I really wanted to bring it to subscribers' attention, to your attention, because maybe you've heard this too. A lot of people were starting to correlate the corona crash with the 1987 crash. 
But you can take a look at the blip, just a blip with regard to a rise in unemployment in 1987. You compare that to where we're at now. You cannot compare the 87 crash to where we are at right now. So here is the way. So, so objectively, you're young. You're 30 years old. What a wonderful time to be coming into the market. And what I'd really rather you do out here is I'd really rather you wait for that next solid bottom, that next solid bottom. And, and continue to, to listen to the show or spend some time maybe learning these charting patterns out here. But don't get it caught up in the emotional euphoria that can be out here. And look, I, I could be dead wrong. I could absolutely be dead wrong. Um, you know, and so, but I'm just going to present the information to you. If you were my son or daughter, um, you know, I would be giving them this exact same information. You've got to wait. There's going to be another low. There's going to be another low. We're only dealing with the health stuff. Wait till we start dealing with the economic stuff. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets. This is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direct of the key indices, selective stocks and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30 day money back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN.
Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, I had a question here, a couple of questions really about gold and harmony. So let's take a look at both of those. One was inside the tiger's den looking for where's the support level inside of gold. So here, here's what we know about the daily contract right now for gold. It, for, it has a confirmed TD9 count topping pad. It was bar number eight. As we speak right now, gold is trading below support for its daily time frame. That would be the bottom of its profile, and that is 170660. Now, we have seen this play before. We've seen gold close below support, and then the very next session, get back above it. Close below it, get back above it. This is where really the Stevie's two bar rule comes. Doesn't matter whether what time frame it is, but two bars below support. I uh, give you a really good indication. Not a guarantee, but a really good indication that, in fact, it has broken through support. So if tomorrow, if today we see a close below 170660 and tomorrow another close below 170660, support is going to be 1595.20 out there. That's where price would head back to. Now, there's a pretty good chance that that is really what is unfolding. If I put up the five-hour time frame chart, well, I can't tell you whether it is or it isn't. Right, we have to let this play out. But if you take a look at the five hour time frame, we haven't seen a close below a five hour breakout level since gold made its run topside off of the March 19th low. Price right now is pulling right back into that support area. Now, at 2 p.m. in four, less, than, uh, less than five minutes, uh, 1695.40 is the uh, number. We're trading at 1693.20. But if you get that second bar closed today, this afternoon, below 1695.40, that might be an early indication that gold is ready to move back into that 1595 level out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at Goldilocks. Now, if we go take a look at Harmony, Gold ticker symbol there is HMY. The question is, where do we see a good longer term entry point inside of Harmony? So let's pull over Harmony Gold and uh, see what it is that we see out here. We can see that price really struggling at the resistance area of 371. A potential buy area would be 329, but you're asking for a much longer term level. And uh, I would have to say that's maybe in the 317 ish type area. But here's what I recommend that you do, Jerry. Let's wait to see how gold trades tomorrow. Maybe right back to me, just to remind me tomorrow. Let's take a look at gold and harmony as well. Hey, folks, thanks so much for being here. Stay tuned. Two more great hours. Oh, by the way, I'm going to be doing one of those hours, three to four. But you got your favorite polar bear, David White. He's up next. Take care.